continuous integration kind of proof of concept demo. Um, thanks for coming along. I wasn't expecting so many people, to be perfectly honest. It's a fairly niche, uh, kind of targeted area. Um, just to show of hands, who's doing continuous integration currently? Oh, look at that. Um, who's seen or heard of Lability? Yeah, a few hands, okay. So there'll be a bit of a, bit, a bit of an integration, um, um, uh, a less quick introduction, a lesson around uh, Lability, what it is and how it works. We will need that to show you what's going on. Um, there is another session tomorrow around Lability uh, and deploying Nano Server. That's at half past eight tomorrow, so I'm expecting even less people to be there. Um, but hopefully we'll we'll see how we get on. This is more of a proof of concept, okay? Um, how do we test the Active Directory DSC resources that are up on, up on GitHub? Um, there are unit tests for those DSC resources that are up there. Not all of them. Uh, that's another issue that I have every time we commit to those resources. We have to have unit test coverage. So there's a lot of technical debt that needs to be filled there. Um, but the problem we've got is with the AppVaya integration system that is currently used for the DSC resources, is whilst it now supports reboots, you can't install Active Directory. So how do we run integration tests with the DSC resources? Um, knowing that we can't do it on AppVaya, so we have to use, you know, do it locally. So if we're coding locally, how can we run integration tests, you know, outside of that continuous deployment? And of course, this could be plugged into um, local build agents. So we could plug into AppVaya or Travis or um, Jenkins or whatever by using the ability um, to run integration tests for those DSC resources, but obviously there's a cost there. Yeah. So we're gonna have a quick discussion around or, um, what integration testing is, a very brief one, and a very brief introduction about what Lability is. Uh, and then we're gonna look at how do we test the Active Directory commandlets, and then you know, there's, there's more demo than there is me talking and pointing at slides, right? Um, so integration testing. Um, what, what is integration testing compared to unit testing? We've got another talk tomorrow around the philosophy of testing, um, what makes a good test and a bad test, and where do you start, all that sort of stuff. But from, uh, from the perspective of the Active Directory DSC resources, the integration tests, rather than the unit test focusing on the logic of the modules, and uh, you know, the, when we call um, you know, the DC promos, when we, when we do install ADDS Forest, you know, or domain, or whatever it happens to be, we can test the, the logic and the intent Within those, within those units of code. So we've got tests for that. However, there are other reports, and 2016 is a good example. When Server 2016 came out, the, the main deployment on Server 2016 took, A, took a lot longer, but B, broke the DSC resource. So the DSC resource would actually fail, and then it wouldn't pick up again until the next DSC consistency check that came around. So we could have picked this up with integration tests, you know, that 2016 would have broken that actual active directory deployment. Other good examples are there are issues out on GitHub at the moment that if you try and add a user to an AD group and the user doesn't exist, the resource throws an error and it actually ends up creating an you know, empty AD group. So obviously we can't run integration tests in a production environment. Well, we could. We could use run it in production if we wanted to. Um, but it's really difficult to how do we test deploying a new domain when you've got no infrastructure, you've got no domain infrastructure, how does authentication work in the last resource? So for the purpose of this talk is how, um, how do we run those actual integration tests? So when we, we call XAD user to create an AD user, it should create an AD user and then we're gonna validate that that actually exists. Yeah, and all the properties and all that sort of stuff. Not the intent, but the actual integration of this running in an in a, in a Active Directory environment. Um, integration tests as a whole um, are a lot slower to run and they're a lot more brittle and they're more difficult to put together. So when we take a unit test, what we try and do is uh, the dependencies for, you know, are typically stubbed out in our, integrate, uh, in our unit test. So we try and fake as much as we can just to test that logic and the, the, um, the inputs and the outputs of the module give us what we expect. When we come to integration tests, we've got a lot of dependencies. I mentioned this. So to, to test Active Directory, then obviously we need to spin up a virtual machine or deploy a physical server somehow. 
that we can then run DC Promo on. Yeah. If we want to test setting up a child domain, then we need to deploy a parent domain in a forest and then deploy another machine, whether that's physical or virtual, and test that, you know, after the dependencies are there, we then deploy that child domain and check that it's all there. You know? Create an AD user, we need an AD domain. So from an integration test, how do we, you know, there's a whole, whole load of dependencies that we need to think about when it comes to integration tests. What happens if my AD domain blows up, you know, and then I've got a whole load of other tests that depend on that, how can we handle that? You know? So this has covered some of this as what's in here. You know? When we come to continuous integration, we are talking about using a continuation, uh, continuous integration system that is going to, um, based on some kind of trigger, um, typically, cur well currently in the um, DSC resource field, um, when we check in code uh, and issue a pull request in GitHub, then AppVay kicks in, it spins up um, a virtual machine and all of our unit tests run, okay? So from a continuous integration perspective, this could be extended to um, spinning up virtual machines, talking to other systems, etc. But here, the CI system is just purely there to run something, right? Provide some context, provide some feedback, maybe some um, um, some artifacts that gets spat out at the end of the build process. Okay? So there's um, continuous integration uh, and CI systems. What our problem is, is to perform our Active Directory integration tests, and they're not just related to uh, Active Directory, Hyper-V, we also have the same issue. How do we integrate and test the Hyper-V DSC resources? So unfortunately, from my perspective, I seem to spend most of my time contributing to AD and Hyper-V. Um, so how do we test the creation of a, a, a you know, the, when we run um, with it X Hyper-V VM, that it actually creates a VM? We've got unit tests, but how do we run these integration tests? And if we've got a bit of inception going on when you think about Lability, we could test integration test Lability using Lability on a nested Hyper-V. But again, some of that comes to covers tomorrow. Um, so that uh, we cannot deploy um, a VM. We cannot install Active Directory inside an app VM machine. We cannot install Hyper-V, so you cannot enable the Hyper-V feature inside an app VM machine. So how do we integrate and do some testing on this? Yeah. Um, oh, and the other problem is, is the fact that we can't do this in AppVaya is we need a way of, if somebody wants to pull down the repo and run their own integration test, is how do we deploy and configure a local integration test environment that people can then run the integration test themselves. So I could, if I was that way inclined, I could download the Active Directory modules, I could spin up a, a virtual machine and then I could write a DSC configuration, I can run it and do whatever I like. Yeah. However, for the integration tests, we need a consistent way of defining that environment. Okay? And this is where Lability comes in. So we've got one issue around how do we integrate, you know, perform integration testing on DSC resources that don't allow us to, um, that we can't do in AppVaya, um, so we need to look at some other method. But then we also need another way of recreating that in a reliable and consistent fashion, which is reliability. So there's two, really two problems. So what is the ability? Um, it's kind of a, it, it was a module that I put together for us internally, originally. We, ha we needed a way of um, deploying a consistent development, testing and training. So we do a lot of training um, in the end user compute space. So we do a lot of Citrix. Um, a little bit, a lot of res and all that sort of stuff. So how do we deploy training environments in a consistent fashion? Bearing in mind that we were, we were running on Zen server originally, then we moved to AWS, then we moved to, we're currently in Revelo, but now we're looking at moving to Azure Dev Test Labs. So we needed a consistent way of spinning these environments up and DSC was that answer. Yeah. The bit that we were missing internally is how do we develop our DSC configurations? Bearing in mind we've got multiple nodes, we've got domain controllers, we've got web servers, we've got certificate services and all that sort of stuff. How could we test the deployment and if it failed, tear it down and just redeploy it? So that's where Lability came from. It's just a way of deploying a, a Hyper-V based lab. But rather than some of the other solutions that are out there, we take the DSC configuration document that you want to deploy in your lab environment. So 
if you had five nodes defined in your configuration document, the ability would spin up five virtual machines and it would inject the DSC configuration in there. So you could compile the configurations and then you could get high, um, an ability to spin up that lab environment. So you had you know, with one configuration document for your lab environment, you know, you could create the DSC configurations, you could spin out the MOFs and the MetaMOFs from that configuration document and then the ability would read that document and then infer and spin up virtual machines and create networks and you know, OS's and that sort of stuff. So that's where the ability comes in. So in theory, when we're looking at integration testing, we could have it that when we check a code, well, when we check code in or we want to wish to run our integration tests manually, we could have in our repository, we could have DSC configurations that test the domain controller or the Active Directory resources. Yeah, so we could specify configuration that says we need the domain yeah, and then we want to create a user and then we could have a separate document that tests that. We could then use the ability to say, well, here's my configuration and I want to run the integration test. So the ability will take that configuration, spin up the VMs, inject the configuration and then you could test it. And of course, what's the next integration test? Well, it might be I need two different domains. Yeah. So the, you have a different configuration document. The ability to tear that down and then spin up Two, you know, two VMs deploy one in the you know, cross node dependencies in DSE. You can then wait for the, for the second node to converge, and then you can run your integration test. Make sure that you know, the domain comes up as you expected. If you specified alternate paths, or you're creating using the specific OU, or using the XAD organizational unit resource, so you know it could infer that information and run it for you. Now, there are open source equivalents. So you've probably all heard of Vagrant and Packer. Um, they do similar things. They do them in, um, in sli slightly different ways. This only came, Lability only came around because it was focused on DSC. And so if you were looking at deploying um, across more than just DSC for your configuration management or development environments or whatever, Lability is probably not the solution for you. Um, but there are some people using it. So, um, so for the um, plural site, so Jason Helmick, he's got a PS Auto Lab module, um, which uses the ability under the hood. I mean, if you think about this classic example for training, um, you've got people who are going to take a plural site course, and they, that they may want to follow along and perform, you know, do labs and all that sort of stuff. Is as part of the the training course, you can just get a ability configuration document. You can install the module. As long as you've got a Hyper-V in it, it will install it for you. It could then download all the resources. So it download evaluation ISOs. It will create sysprep VMs and then you, know, you can compile the configuration and then inject them, inject modules, all that sort of stuff. Um, so there's a nice easy way for, for trainers to package their training environments up and for you know students, delegates that are going there, they can just download this. The auto PS auto lab is a wrap around the ability around you know providing some better feedback for users and stuff. So it's out there. For the continuous integration in, integration, bad choice of words there, V011 was released uh, late last week. Um, so and it's got a couple of additional um, commands added to it. Okay, so um, as you'll see when we come to look at deploying, we've got we've got two problems, yeah. Any questions so far on the ability and what it is and how it works? So, when it comes to testing Active Directory, we have a three phase deployment. Loosely described in a, in a standard testing pattern. So, if we come to the talk tomorrow around testing, standard testing pattern is AAA. So, you've got your range, your act, and your assert within your tests. So all intents and purposes here, I need to get a whole load of ducks in line. You know, I need to line up all my ducks before I then deploy my configuration that I want to test. And then after that's done, I need to test it. So if I'm going to run uh, a DC promotion, I need to have a VM. Yeah. With the ability, I could combine everything into one configuration document. And so I could do steps one and two at the same time. Yeah. So I could deploy my dependencies, and then I could inject the, the configuration, wait for it to run, and then I can run my tests against it. Um, I decided not to do that in this example. A, it's easier to get, you know, get your 
your head around what's going on. So there is a DSC configuration in which we apply, which sets up the test environment. Yeah, that's phase one. We have a configuration. And then after that's done, we wait for that to apply. We then compile the integration test, if you like. So we compile a configuration the deploys Active Directory. And then we wait for that to finish. And then at the very end is we run our tests. And I will run, we'll run test the tests. Uh, and the example that I've got, and we'll also run OVF tests as well. So operational validation framework. People heard of that? So there's two different ways of testing it. Yeah, so we've got two problems. We need to spin up an environment weight and then spin up another one. So when we look at the range, we've got some issues. So we need to um, create VM. We need to deploy an OS. We need to apply some configuration because we need to communicate with that. Um, so we need to compile them off, inject them off into the virtual machine, and wait for it to finish. Yeah, This is traditionally how you would use Nobility. So let's have a, um, let's have a quick demo. Right? So like all good trainers, oh yeah, I'll have to zoom in. So let me show you the code first. So let me zoom in. Can you read that at the back? A bit bigger. Um, first of all, on the right-hand side over here, you'll notice I've got two configurations. I've got a lability configuration, and I've got a config. So here are my two-stage deployments. One is setting up my prereqs. So I have a DSC configuration for deploying my, my, my prereqs. And then I have a, a the config file is actually my integration test. It needs a bit of tidy up, and that's part of the follow-up on this is with a unit test, there's no kind of like one-to-one -one mapping. So a unit test would be like you'd have one test file, and that would, you know, you'd be testing you know one DSC resource. With our integration test, we've got configuration data, we've got the actual configuration, and then we've got multiples of them, and they all, they all need to be kind of grouped together. Um, so if we look at our ability configuration, so all we're going to do here is we're going to create a metamorph. So we've got my local configuration node. Yeah. And then I'm going to do nothing, yeah, really. For lability's sake, it's expecting a MOF file. Yeah, so I need to trick this. There's an, there's an enhancement that needs to be put into the module here. So lability is expecting to find a MOF file and a MetaMOF file. Yeah, so it's all around DSC configuration. So here I'm just generating an empty script resource, but I'm going to end up with a MOF file. Yeah. Other than that, it's going to do not a lot, except if I look in my configuration data, how's the ability going to, to pull that out? Yeah. So I've got some, my all node data. So here you can see I've got a node name, I've got a wildcard, and I've got a node name of DC. So here I want to deploy uh, a VM called DC. It's got an IP address there, it doesn't actually need it um, for the configuration perspective. Um, and then we've got some mobility metadata that's sprinkled in. So this is a standard PSD1 file, standard configuration document. So I can default all my VMs you know, to two processes. You can start up many four VMs. I can provide boot orders. I'm telling it that when mobility spins up this virtual machine, that is the OS image that I want it to use. And if I wanted to use a different OS image, if I want to use core, for instance, um, then I could do that here. I just use the same configuration. Um, I could have used core. Um, nano obviously wouldn't work in this instance. Now, what I have done is I could have specified the installation. So here I've got a custom bootstrap. So this gets injected into setup.cmd, or setup complete CMD as part of the unattended installation. And it's just going to install some roles, give it an IP address, and set you know, DNS plant server address. Yeah. Um, and then does a little sleep because when I was recording the demos, it's too quick. So when when we were deploying the um, trying to DC promo the box, it was saying that it was still installing roles, and they'd obviously they'd finished as part of the configuration. So just a bit slight delay in there. I could have specified all of that as a DSC configuration, but I just wanted to keep it separate for your perspective. You know that there is a configuration that gets applied. 
and then we're going to wait for the VM to finish applying its DSC configuration. So that's what's going on in this first, first part of the demo. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit. I need to do the live one, don't I? <laughs> no. So, I'll be using now. So here, what's going on? I paused it. I think no, I haven't. So what's going on here is lability is. Only one night ago, I was in there. Let me look, I'll show you the code. Yeah. So there is, this script is running. It's called an integration.test file. It's probably badly named, but this is where I start. So this is a standard, I don't know if you've seen the DSC resources. This is a standard testing template that's available for the unit tests uh, up on GitHub. The only real difference that we've got so far is that we're importing the lability module, so on line 33, we import lability because we want to spin up a VM before we can DC prime it up. So, we import the lability module, and then obviously we, uh, we get some credentials, stop me fat fingering things. Um, these are integration tests, so this could be any of this. this to all intents and purposes, you could pull out of, these out of configuration store, you know, um, the vault or whatever, if you needed to, for the purposes of spinning up a, an integration test and just testing it as DC promo, then that's fine. Um, we then compile the configuration. So that initial configuration, the one that's got the dummy script file in it, is we compile the configuration. We then clear the module path, so we make sure that there's no DSC resources installed on our module path, because obviously if we're going to compile the configuration, um, the resources that are in the VM need to be matched to the resources that are on the machine that generated the MOF file, so we need to make sure that that's all clear. So here on line 59 is we actually invoke the compilation, so we inject, um, we get the so we invoke the compilation. We'll, we'll get a MOF file out of that. So we pass in the path. We so there's that lability.ps1 file. So there's our configuration. We then give it the configuration name that we're going to invoke. Yeah, and this will spit out some MOFs. Yeah. You're all with me so far. The ability then starts down here. So this start lab configuration, this is going to read the configuration data. And it's going to go, ah, you want one virtual machine. Yeah. Um, it's going to create the virtual machine. It's going to use the OS, sysprept OS disk that's on there. If it doesn't exist, the ability will create it for you. If the media doesn't exist, it'll go and download the media. Yeah, so it'll do all of this for you, um, assuming you've got internet connectivity. Um, it's then going to start the VM and kickstart that, that bootstrap process. So that's what's going on here. So if I just show you this, it won't, won't take two seconds. Right? So. You'll see it created the, the HCDC. Uh, no, it won't. It'll spin up in a minute. CIDC. So here, it's going through, it's checking, it's running the DSC resources to check to see whether the VM is available. It's going to create the VM. Yeah. It's then going to inject, compile the configuration, inject all of the required modules and things that are specified in our ability configuration. It's then going to spin up a VM. Now that VM is going to run through the sysprep process, it's going to run setupcomplete.cmd, which is then going to kick in the, the LCM to do a deployment, and then you know, we're going to wait for that to happen. So here is that we're waiting for the lab to finish. You know, so this is one of the new commandments that was added, or new functions that was added into the module, is we can now wait for all of the nodes that are specified in our configuration document. We can then we can wait for the DSC um, the local configuration manager to converge. So that's what's going on here. We're waiting for this VM to finish. So the VM's come up. The LCM will be invoked. It will deploy any configuration. Normally this might take a little while, depending on your, um, on your DSC configuration. 
So it's now connected to the to the VM. If this was five VMs, six VMs, it would do whatever, right? Now what's happened is it's connected to the remote session, seen that it's finished, and it's going to carry on with our script. So here's that phase one is complete of our integration test. We've deployed a VM. We've got an IP address, and we can talk to it. Yeah, so here's that wait. So we wait. We point it to, we give it the configuration details. We give it the credentials of the virtual machines we want to connect to or connect with. And then it's going to wait for that DSC configuration to, to finish. We then carry on. So this is our integration test now, right? We've got over that first hump. It's automatically created a VM and got it ready for us. Now we're going to compile the actual integration test DSC configuration. Yeah, so this is, we are going to now deploy an Active Directory domain. We are going to invoke that configuration inside our virtual machine, and we're going to wait for it to finish. Assuming it does finish. Yeah? It may not finish. Um, so uh, let's have a look at the configuration. So here is our, here is our configuration. Yeah? So this is a very simple one. So we've got a metamorph that's going to be applied, um, but we're actually going to deploy the act, you know, an Active Directory domain passing in configuration data. So what is configuration data? Looks very similar to the other one. So we can control, we're going to create a domain called test.local or we can set that bias name and then obviously we can run some tests against that. As part of this resource you can set things like paths to, um, you know, we're going to have your um, your Active Directory database and all that sort of stuff. So you could have lots of integration tests. You want to check that, realistically, you want to check that if you deploy it, it goes in the default, and if you specify an alternate one, then it'll go in there. So there's two integration tests you need to run. And these can take 5, 10, 15 minutes. How long does it take to deploy a domain? So we have a very small integration test that we're going to do here. So this one is um, just deploying... It's just deploying that domain using that configuration. So, so the machine's there, Lability spun up this machine. Now we need to somehow, bearing in mind that we've got a security boundary now, so this host that's running on is not a member of the domain that we want to deploy. This machine is currently in a work group. How are we going to authenticate? Now we've got no name resolution. How are we going to connect to this machine to kick off this, this DSC configuration to test that it actually deploys an Active Directory domain as we'd expect it to? Um, I can see that it doesn't use PowerShell. It could use PowerShell Direct. It used PowerShell Remoting. The reason I avoided that is because obviously you need to then have a 2016 host or Windows 10 host, and obviously the, the target OS has got to be the same as well. So here, I could run this integration test on 2012, 2012 R2, and 2016 using exactly the same configuration, just my, my configuration data where they need to change. I need to, in my PSD1 file, I need 3D, three PSD1 files to specify different OSs, and I can just reapply the configuration. And the ability to turn the machines down, reprovision them with the correct OS running integration tests. Um, PowerShell Direct, I think, is a great solution. It'd be nice if this comes along for Linux as well, maybe at some point over the VM box, who knows? And then it might be worth doing. Um, for the time being, it doesn't use it though. So what's going on here is Lability is going to compile our new configuration, or the, the integration test here is going to be compiled. So, this one, yeah. So up here, we're going to compile the new configuration. We're going to invoke it down here, which is going to spit out some DS, spit out some MOF files. We're then going to, using invoke command, we're going to copy them into the remote sessions. Now, I don't know if anyone was in Bruce's session earlier, but here you can see we're, we're running this inside the module scope. So when the ability, when we run test lab status or get lab status or you know, wait for lab, Internally, there's a whole load of remote sessions that are spun up. So here we're getting a reference to them so that we can then invoke command against those sessions. 
So we're reaching in, we're running get PS session from within inside our module scope, it returns us all of this open connections, and we can then invoke the command against our, you know, against our actual integration sort. So, inside of our VM, and this would do it on all VMs at the moment, obviously there's only one VM in this example, um, but we're gonna create a folder called Ability CI in the root. We're gonna copy the module under test. So this is another problem we've got. We want to, so we're gonna clone the repository. We need to spin up a VM, but then we need to copy the module we've just cloned into the VM we've just spun up to test it. I don't want to download X Active Directory from the gallery or whatever. I need to test the latest versions of the code. So there is no, it's not packaged as a module. We're running inside at this moment in time. So, you know, there's a copy. I'm copying to the modules folder the, the root. You know, so I, in, in essence, I'm copying the clone repository. I'm just copying all of that into the virtual machine so that the X Active Directory module that we're testing against is in the VM, right? We don't have a pool server, so if I want to deploy the main, I need to make sure that I copy the exact same module in that was compiled by it. Um, so we create a folder in the root of the VM. We then copy in the module under test, and then we here we copy in the MOF file. So I've compiled the MOF files using the current, the latest version of Active Directory. Compile my MOF files, I then need to copy the MOF files and the latest version of Active Directory into my VM before I can invoke it. And that's, that's what's going on here. And then we're starting a DSC configuration in those remote sessions. So that's what's going on. That's what you're gonna see here. Try and talk you through it, it does run a bit quick. So, it's copied in two MOF files. Yeah, it's copied in the, um, the, 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 the module, and now it's invoking that, that actual Active Directory domain deployment. So, this video is like 20 minutes long. About 15 minutes of it is waiting for Active Directory to deploy. So we'll all just sit down and take a look. There's a reason I recorded it. Right? So this is going to go through. It's going to deploy. Obviously, Active Directory is deploying. It's going to go through its process. It's going to reboot. And then it's going to sit there for a bit longer. So here, we're still... So what we're doing is we're now waiting. We're connecting into that virtual machine over the existing um, remote sessions that have been open, and we're waiting for the LCM to say it's finished. And so the way that test lab status and get lab status work is we connect to the virtual machines that are defined in the PSD1 file, we then wait for the LCM to say it's idle, so the configuration has been applied. So this, you'll see, it's like, it says it's busy, 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 you know, and it goes on for about 15 minutes. It reboots, it comes up, but it's still configuring itself. And this is the part that I could have done in one. So I, what I could have done is I could have created one DSC configuration that deploys the virtual machine and um, deploys Active Directory. We're doing it in two stages. You know, the ability will actually allow you to do it in one, just so that we separate those, those concerns. So whoopee-doo. This will say it's finished in a second. We have now, we have now deployed a virtual machine. We have compiled the latest version of the Active Directory DSC resource to deploy the main. We've deployed the domain. The domain's come up, it says it's successful. Now we've got our third problem, which is how do we test? Yeah. How do we test these DSC resources? So let's have a look. So in our script, yeah, and here's that wait lab. So We've started the DSC configuration. We're waiting for this to finish. This is the bit that's taken 15 minutes. Once, once it says, once the LCM says it's idle, yeah, so we've deployed an Active Directory domain. How do we then, um, how do we then run our actual integration test? Has anyone tried running Pester test remotely? Yeah, that'd be fun. There is actually a module out there called Remotely. Has anyone seen Remotely? Yeah, so Deepak's one, yeah. So that's, 
something I want to break up into. I just ran out of time and I was struggling with credentials actually with, with Deepak. But um, so what we're doing here is we are we're fetching sessions again. This is another thing that caught me out. We're deploying a domain controller. The domain controller reboots. When it comes back up, we need to reauthenticate and reconnect. We've got a new session. So when I was running through this to begin with, it was like, uh, why does it say never come back up again? Because it, it couldn't connect. Um, so we refresh our sessions to get the latest session objects. And then here, we copy the test files into the virtual machine over that session. So this does require version 5 because we're using the copy item and using two session. So here we're now, um, rather than trying to invoke things remotely, um, using Pierce remotely in this instance, we're just copying all the test files into the virtual machine. We're then invoking Pester and giving it the path yeah, to, that, to those tests. Yeah. Passing in some configuration parameters, and I'm also, invoking uh, an OVF here. So this OVF Active Directory module is, uh, I think it's abandons. Um, it's just standard, a standard set of Active Directory tests. You know, there's nothing, nothing fancy at all, really. It just tech checks that you know, LDAP ports are open and that you know, things are, are working as expected. It's a fairly basic test. Mm -hmm. uh, that one is, yes. Yeah, so Brandon's got uh, Brandon Olin, that's Ticketmaster on the list, I think, something, something like that. But yeah, that, I mean, that's on the gallery. I mean, it's in the gallery, you can go and find it. It's also on GitHub, um, just some standard bits. So in here, I'm going to wait for the VM to come back up. It still says it's busy. It might be busy for a few more minutes yet. Yeah, I didn't think you all would want to sit and watch this. So, I'm pausing it for that. So, we wait for the VM to come up. So we wait for the VM to come up. See, so it says busy, 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 busy. Um, and then here you can see it goes to idle. Yeah, so actually, took, it didn't take 15 minutes, it took nine minutes. Yeah. So actually deploy Active Directory, wait for it to come back up. And you can imagine if you're doing this, running integration tests against Active Directory, I could see this taking hours. Yeah, by the time you actually run the integration tests on you know, all of the different scenarios, child domains, you know, Active Directory groups, or use, all that sort of stuff. So it's come back up, it's then copied in, you can see it's copied in the, the test files. Yeah. Um, notice it's copied in the configuration data as well, because when we invoke our test, we need the configuration data, and I'll, I'll show you the test in a second. So we deployed a domain with a NetBIOS domain name of test.local. We said we wanted the NetBIOS name of test. So these are kind of like dynamics. So how do we, we've then got to read that data in to then perform our test. So if we update our configuration data, we, want our, we don't want to break our tests. So we need to copy in the configuration data and that needs to be the same configuration data, of course, that we created our integration test for. So that's running um, some PESTA tests, I think. I can't remember whether the video actually incorporates our yeah the video is finished so the so this has only run the pester tests this hasn't run our OVF tests so I'm just spinning the machine up and just show that so this is the VM that this the, the video was taken from so this VM is in the state as is the end of the video. Right? So I, I thought I'd leave it there. It's just I need to get in. Um, so if I was to connect to this VM, 
I should now be able to run some OVF tests as well. So I should be able to take, is that the same script that I've been showing you? Um, and run just the last portion. Obviously, I don't necessarily want to, uh, to get the ability to blow it away and redeploy the main controller. So, let me show you how the, uh, how the OVF tests work. So, I need to create my uh, session. I think that's not true. Can anyone remember the password was? P. So I've got a session to that virtual machine. If we were running, if we were following through the script here, we would then we would then run this, right? And it would return us some results. So this is running the OVF test on the on the machine. As part of deploying the configuration, nobody's asked this actually. Is that obviously the OVF framework requires a module? So in, on that VM is a module with the Active Directory stuff in it. I'm not sure that makes any sense. No, I don't think so. Well, I don't know. <laughs> this is going to hopefully run some some OVF tests inside inside that virtual machine, and well, I'll show you those OVF tests as well, so you can see that they're coming out and they're running. And any failure would then be able to be picked up on the the integration server. I put this in later, which is why I wasn't in the video, just to give the example, because you may, you know, not only do you have pester tests, you may want to run OVF tests as well. The, the formatting is slightly different, so pester tests come out as XML, which you can then upload to, uh, to your, your kind of integration service, whether that's BSTS or whatever normally. So let's have a, have a look. There's those spoken mirrors here, but what I do need to show you is when I initially deployed this configuration here, is there's some metadata down the bottom. So this is how we tell the ability to do various things under various con conditions. So here I notice I've got an environment prefix. So my VM was created with the name CI-DC. So the, in my configuration, it was just DC. So the environment prefix is just a way in Hyper-V, because otherwise if you've got like 10 VMs that are called DC, it all gets a bit confusing, depending on which lab environment you're running. Um, if I wanted to, to copy DSC resources into my nodes, I could specify them in the, in the configuration data and the ability would copy them in. If it didn't have them locally, it would go to the PowerShell gallery, it would download them and cache them. Yeah, the same with the modules. So this is where I told it yeah, to copy in that module. Yeah, so the OVF Active Directory. Yeah, so that's been copied in the ability when it creates my differencing disk mounts the VHD and it's copied all of those in. So it's copied Pester in, it's copied Poshbec, um, it's copied OVF itself, and it's copied in the tests. Am I using? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to check that out then. Yeah, so internally, the ability will, you can spec, because obviously you can specify stuff here to require versions that you need. It can also pull modules down directly from GitHub as well, so they don't have to be published to the gallery, which is quite handy if you want to pull down the development branch of a particular resource for, you know, for, for whatever you need to do. So that is, that is why the modules are on that node already. Okay, good. If I 
context of the So this is obviously running on my domain controller. You'll see that up here. Up here. Now you can see that it's copied in all of those modules for you. There is an issue because I use a 2016 VM, but Pesto already exists. Um, yeah, so it, I mean, we're getting more into the way that the ability works. So the way that the ability works is it creates a master VHD um, based on the OS that you specify, and you can specify. I mean, there's loads, there's loads that are in there by default. If I was to do um, GitLab Media, not there, I won't. So a lot of these are the the built-in media that the ability's got available. So if you wanted to deploy a VM um, on 2012 V51 eval, then the ability can go and download the required media and create a VM. So the ability will create master VHDs and then for every VM it will create a differencing disk and it will then mount that VHD and it will copy in the metamoth and the moth files and any resources, you know, so any modules and DSC resources in the mounted VHD. Yes. So it adds in that and obviously copies in an unattended XML and all that sort of stuff, you know, dismounts the VHD and then when you start it, Windows will run through its standard you know, setup process, which is where when I created that custom bootstrap, the ability will inject that, this bit here. It copies a bootstrap PS1 file in into the virtual machine. Really done here. So when the ability creates the differencing disk, it does copy a few things in. One of them being, if we look in here. So there's the ability CI stuff. So there are my tests and things um, that were copied in as part of that process. So there's my integration test file. There's the configuration that's got my Active Directory deployment in. I copy them in, I then kickstart that deployment. But what the ability will do by default is it copies in in the bootstrap folder. It creates a bootstrap file. So the setup CMD kicks that off. So it copies in the bootstrap file and that custom configuration that I put in, it gets put into that file. Setup CMD kicks that bootstrap off and there's a bootstrap log file so you can see what Lability is doing. We also copy in, there's the metamoth and the moth file that Lability is expecting to spin up that virtual machine. That's the one, this one here will have just the script resource in it. So this is standard Lability configuration at this point. So this will just be a script resource. You know, that empty one that I put in, it's a script. This returns true on the test, you know, just to say it's compliant. Um, and copy in the modules. There are some built-in certificates. So um, if you want to use and, uh, and don't want to use um, plain text passwords and stuff, you can use the certificates that are built in. And it's just part of the ability, it's just a self-signed cert. So the ability will install that root certificate and then that certificate that's there can be specified to decrypt credentials. 
because a lot of what we do with Ability internally is we're spinning up Active Directory, right? So this is completely different. If you already had Active Directory and you were looking at deploying a configuration, that'd be fairly straightforward. You don't, you're not worried about the Active Directory bit. But the fact that most of our training and development environments, we need Active Directory, we've got, there's no trust between the, the host machine because we're spinning up a new Active Directory. So it's a bit, you know, obviously you can't, you know, you can't join this to the domain before it's deployed, right? So all of this is going across the trust boundary. So which is why we include those certificates by default. So you can, you can encrypt them. Um, so if I look at the bootstrap file, just quickly, it doesn't do a lot, it installs the certificates and then kicks off the, the actual deployment. Yeah, so this is the bootstrap. Turns on transcription, which is what generates the log file that you see. Um, we then import the root certificate uh, and then import the, um, the PFX for the DSC credentials. Um, there's my custom bootstrap. So where you see the DNS, all the features being added, that's that custom that start sleeps 30. That's the bit that I've injected. Yeah. I could do that on a per node basis. So in my DSC configuration, I can say, when the ability deploys this virtual machine, I want it to run these commands you know, as part of that setup. Um, and then we do some massaging, <laughs> put it politely. Um, we do some massaging on the uh, on the LCM. So we configure the LCM, and this is a vor the four thing is we constantly bash the LCM over the head until it starts a deployment. And has anyone deployed DSC on V4? You know, the, the initial version of WMF. Oh, it was painful, it was awful. Um, however, Lability still supports that. So this, yeah, it bloody well takes it, right? So it starts configuration. If WMI moans, it then waits, and then it just tries reapplying it again. And eventually, it will kick in. So that's what's going on there. And that's, that's all Ability is really doing. It's reading that configuration data. It's inferring some stuff. IUBM names, you can you can then get it to inject things into the bootstrap process. It will copy in the modules and resources um, and start that VM. All that lab environment. So I know we've only got a single configuration there, but if you were to look at um, get commands. There's quite a few commands that are in here, things like um, checkpoint lab, start lab, all that sort of stuff. So you pass it in the configuration data, it infers all of the nodes that are in part of your lab and it will checkpoint them and you can stop the lab and start the lab. Um, you get like quick VMs which you can deploy, which I'll show tomorrow. Um, but yeah, you want to reset your lab, a lab VM back to a point in time or we deploy it. It's all in there. It's, there's, there's a lot of commands. Um, so I know Jason Helmet uses this. I think they use it internally within the DSC team, I think. So obviously being a DSC configuration for testing deployments and stuff. If Mark Gray was here, he'd be able to tell you more. I, I know that they, they use it to some capacity internally within Microsoft as well. Okay. So. As you can see, I'm going to have to skip over a... Uh, I know the slides will cover them already. Um, so phase two was when we actually deploy the Active Directory de configuration. We then need to wait for that Active Directory deployment to finish, or whether it was to deploy, you know, two, you know, two domains, so a parent domain and a child domain, and then maybe you know you might have an integration test that's got two domain controllers in each. You know, you could wait until all of those all of those nodes are converged. That is the enactment phase within our unit integration tests. And then the last phase is to actually run some tests itself. So did the system behave in the way that we expected it to? This is where we can then connect to the remote sessions and we can then invoke PESTA and OBF to get our test results back. So I've done that. So just kind of a, a bit of a summary, really. A bit of a wrap up. There are, there are lots and lots of improvements that can be made in here. But fundamentally, fundamentally, it is possible that we could use 
the ability to perform integration tests on not only the Active Directory command, uh, DSC resources, but also Hyper-V. You could use it for other stuff as well, right? It doesn't have to be DSC resources. You could use this as part of a pipeline. You could have a configuration that will spin up a load of VMs. You then tell it to do something, and then you run some tests afterwards, and they are the pass of the code. Yeah. The difficult bit is that whole multi-node deployment um, kind of uh, dependency chain. So there are some improvements. I'd like to use Pierce remotely, which has been mentioned, um, for, and it will copy in the test files and all that sort of stuff, and you can use credentials to, to run remote pester tests. So this is not just you know limited to Nobility, um, but this is out there. It's a fork of the remotely project, which is a Microsoft one, which allows you to execute um, tests remotely. I would like to add in some test dependency. So everything that I've shown you today is if I had an integration test to um, create an AD user, I need to deploy AD, I then need to create an AD user, and then need to test that. Yeah. Then wanted to test the XAD group resource, then I need to deploy an Active Directory domain, yeah. create an AD user, probably, and then create a group, and then make sure the user gets added to the group. Because yeah. that's, what else would you be testing that? So there would, I would like some way, and this is, you know, if anyone's got any bright ideas, and I'm open to them, is some way of adding some metadata somewhere that specifies the test dependency. So it would be nice to be able to deploy one domain, test XAD domain works, and then after I've done that, I want to test XAD domain controller, so I want to add a domain controller to that domain, but I need to make sure that that test is run, is finished before this one can run, and if that fails, I don't then want to run all the other tests. And then once I've got, you know, so you can see how all this fits together. But the fact that they're all distinct configurations, if anyone's got ideas how we can easily add metadata somewhere to these integration tests, then I'm open to, to, to hearing that. Um, what about an integration test runner for PESTA? So I can invoke PESTA tests against five nodes, but then I need to kind of assemble those results somehow. Um, so if I'm running tests against 10 nodes, I, you know, I want one XML file that I can upload as my test results. I don't want to upload 10 different files. So there's some, definitely some improvements there. Um, and then you know the, the organizational structure of the integration test, everything was just in one folder. If you had lots of integration tests, you'd end up with hundreds of files. So organizing and storing these would, you know, needs a bit more thinking about at this moment, at this moment in time. On that, integration testing's hard, or harder. Yeah. Um, particularly when it comes to AD and the, the Hyper-V stuff, because we can't assume any dependency. Hopefully that's come across. Um, and we use, when it comes to the testing methodologies, we've, we've, we've used the Arrange, Act, and Assert methodology for our integration tests as well. Yeah. Other than that, any questions? Useful? There's, oh, the code will be up on GitHub. It's not. I don't have internet access at the minute. Um, I would have pushed it um, earlier, but I don't have internet access. If you want to get a hold of the code, it will be. It will be there. Um, the reason it's going to be there is because the integration test is it needs the executive directory DSC resource. So this is why it's in my fork. I can't push this back up to the, to the Microsoft upstream repository. Um, but yeah, the resource will be made, be made available there. Um, but if anyone's got any ideas um, about how this could be better implemented, on, on, you know, or wants to help writing some integration or working on some integration tests for the XFT directory stuff, then you know, I'm all ears because it's sorely needed and it's pretty difficult as it's going to be. Questions? Yeah. So it doesn't copy down. They're all, the only stock ones that come out of the box are, um, are the evaluation versions, because obviously if I start distributing uh, links to MSDM Media Volume License Group or Microsoft, I might get a bit upset. Um, I haven't tried it. Let me quick try it. Um, but no, not a question. They're all in. They're all in here. So, if 
Inside of the module, uh, the ability module, there's a, a media.json file, and in here are all the links. So if you said that you wanted to deploy a 2016 nano service standard, this is everything that Lability needs to be able to create that. You know? So it knows it's an ISO image, it knows it's got to go and download it, there's a checksum there, and then there's some custom data around how do we create that image, and I'll cover more of that tomorrow in, uh, in, our, in, in the nano server one. Um, so here's a, if I pick on a non, so yeah, 2012R2 standard. And there's a download link. We can inject additional, so we enable by default um, .NET Framework 3.5, because obviously after you've deployed the VM and you've dismounted the ISO, if you want to install it, you need internet access. It's not part of the image. But we can also inject hotfixes. Yeah, so to get DSC to work on Windows Server 2012 R2, they're the recommended hotfixes that you need for the WMF4 components to work. And you can add your own, you can add your own media in. So when I did get lab media, I'll do custom. These are my custom images, like my custom media that I've got created. And these, some of these have, you know, VHD. So if you can create a, any way you can get a VHD, you can create a reference to it. So things like Netscaler, you know, you download these from Citrix as VHD files. So you can add your own ones. I mean, I've got volume license for these here. Any other questions? Well, thanks for listening. Any questions? Come to me.